Hey everybody, this is Stephen Key, and today I'm going to talk about 18 ways to protect your creativity. That's 18 ways to protect your product ideas. It's a lot of information, so I'm going to go through it pretty quick, so take good notes. First of all, I want to tell you, there's no absolutes here, and that's perfectly fine. Sometimes we want to own something, but at the end of the day, you don't own anything. It's perceived ownership. So there's no absolutes. But with these 18 tips, uh, it's going to give you a better chance of getting paid for your creativity. I want to say, and I've got notes here, you guys, because this is just too much. Um, I'm going to go through uh, uh, the traditional ways, of course, with the USPTO, some of the tools, such as patents and trademarks, things like that. But I'm also going to give you advice on just some really smart business strategies of how to protect those ideas. So I'm going to go through all of it, from big ideas to small ideas. I don't care what you have. I'm going to give you everything that you need to protect those great ideas that you have. First of all, let me tell you this. I'm not a patent attorney. I cannot give legal advice. There you go. There's my disclaimer. Okay. That being said, as I said earlier, um, it's impossible to own everything. It's just as you guys, and it's hard to protect all your ideas. I know you want to protect them, but if Apple cannot protect their intellectual property, it's pretty hard to believe that we can protect our own. So that being said, um, I'm not worried about it. Um, I don't think companies go out there and deliberately try to take your ideas. I just don't think so. Because of social media, uh, it's just bad for business. And because of open innovation, that they're looking for ideas um, to help grow their business forward. The toy industry has been doing it forever. Uh, I give this great example of the Michael Jordan wall ball which they licensed to me for 10 years. I had no ownership whatsoever. And the reason why they did that is because they knew that if they had taken that idea, I would stop submitting ideas, not only myself and others. So here you go. Um, I'm gonna talk about the number one way to protect your creativity product ideas. License it to a company that's big. License it to a company that's got great distribution, that's got the shelf space, that's got relationships, all those type of things. And that's your number one best way of protecting your, your product ideas, you guys, is license it. And find that company that's got great distribution. It's really simple. Find the monster. Retailers don't like to have Me Too products on the shelf. It's as simple as that. Number two, if you can, now everybody, this is going to be hard for a lot of people, but if you can, understand manufacturing. That's right understand a little bit about how your product could be made. It's not a necessity, but if you can, and you can design it to where it can be made the, the most efficiently, the, the, the cheapest, with the highest profit margin, that's a great way of protecting that idea, right? So understand a little bit about manufacturing. I know it's not for everybody, but if you can, it's a great idea. Number three, you guys pick the right, pick the right company to work with. There you go. Pick one that wants to work with you, that's working with outside product developers. Remember, you're not an inventor now, but a product developer, and they, they and build that relationship with them. They're, they will love you to death. So pick the right company, and do that by typing in their name on Google, type in complaints and lawsuits, and see what comes up. Kick the tires on these guys, but find ones, find the companies that really embrace you. There's thousands of them out there, and avoid the companies that don't. Stay away from them. If they ask for a patent, run. Also, do your homework on the particular categories, because some categories, it's kind of the wild, wild west. We talked about it before, so you'd be a little careful, but don't ever be fearful. All right, number four, understanding the tools at the USPTO. You guys, provisional patent applications, I talked about it before. It's very affordable to, to, to write your own provisional patent application. In most situations, you can file it anywhere in the world for $65. What a great tool. Tell your story. I've written a great book on how to sell your ideas with and without a patent. It talks a lot about provisional patent applications. So if you don't have it, pick it up. You'll love it. Really simple to do. What's amazing about this, you can do it. And you don't have to pay an attorney to do it. You can have them review it if you want to, if you're not comfortable with it. But this you can do. Okay, next. Um, the paper trail. Um, you guys, whoever you're talking to, have a paper trail, right? 
follow up every conversation with what was spoken and what the next steps are. It's really simple. This helped me when I was in federal court and I took a small company uh, to court. Uh, maybe you've heard of them, Lego, Legos. And uh, that paper trail helped me kind of document what had transpired, the conversations and everything else. Paper trails are important. Okay, next. Trademarks. This is another tool at the USPTO besides provisional patent application. Trademarks. I don't particularly trademark the names of my products. I don't. But if you've got this spectacular name, consider trademarking it. It's very affordable. It's not hard to do. Learn as much as you can at the USPTO.gov about trademarks. There you go. Next, um, a URL. That's right. If you've got this great URL, you know, you're, you're, that could be... A, Pretty, that kind of value, of course. So it's very, very inexpensive. Most of them are taken these days, but if you can find something that's clever, has value, really communicates well, your URL um, to your website, to your product's website or landing page could have value. Okay, next, copyrights. I love copyrights. You can copyright an image. If you've got some great designs, you can put a catalog of all these designs together, file it for $45. Wonderful protection. I did this with our guitar picks because we had all these great designs with guitar picks and it was a very affordable way, affordable, affordable way to protect it was with copyrights. You read as much as you can at the USPTO about copyrights. It's a great, great tool and a very affordable. Okay, next. Um, just be reasonable. How's that? When you're dealing with the company, be reasonable. In fact, that is number nine. Be reasonable. Don't ask for all this money up front. If you need some money up front, ask them to pay for your patents. Maybe patents that you've already paid for, maybe patents in the future, but negotiate that and it's easy to do. You always control it, you always own it, but have them pay for your patents. It's great value, it helps them, it helps you, it's easy to do. Okay, number 10. Always have minimum guarantees. It's a performance clause. If you sign a licensing agreement with the company, there has to be some type of performance. So if they don't perform, you get your intellectual property back, right? So don't negotiate that at the very beginning. Negotiate that later, and you might have someone might need to help you with that. Minimum guarantees. Okay. Um, next, uh, number eleven. Working with startups. Oh, guys, if you license your ideas with a startup. Just be careful here because two things could happen. Most startups, uh, they might make it, maybe they don't make it. And, and if you sign a licensing agreement with a startup, make sure do you have language in there that says if they, if they file for bankruptcy, you get your intellectual property back and have a patent attorney help you with that language because those guys sometimes are a little rocky when they first start out. Okay, so let's see, what am I? Where am I, you guys? I'm at number 12. Never assign your patent to a company. If you happen to assign your, your patent to a company, make sure, and I've done this before, um, you can assign it to a company um, and make sure they assign it back to you. Put those patents or intellectual property in an escrow account, third party independent escrow company, that if they breach, they make some mistake, you can get it back. And also, of course, have that language in there that before they file bankruptcy, you get it back. It's not an absolute, but it will help if it ever goes to court. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, number 13, here's a great way to protect your intellectual property. If you can carve out and license it to more than one company, not a bad idea. It's not easy to do, but you can. Always ask the company, what do they need to be successful? Companies don't do everything. So find out where they're not strong, carve it out so you can license it to another company. It's always good to have two eggs in your basket. Okay, there you go. Uh, design patents. Everybody says design patents don't have any uh, protection. Yes, they do. In certain situations, a design patent, very affordable, and it does. If your idea has to look a certain way, a design patent can be very, very affordable and have value. So check it out. Read as much as you can about design patents. Uh, let's go. NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, because I'm running out of time. Non-disclosure agreements, um, NDAs can be very important, especially if you only have trade secrets, but also if you have language in there about they cannot re-engineer your idea. 
have a patent attorney help you with that language, that's a great tool. Uh, trade secrets. Hey, don't tell anybody about your idea. That's one of the best ways of protecting your creativity. If you have a process or how to make something a certain way, don't share it. Don't file a patent on it. Just keep it to yourself. Trade secrets can have value. Coca-Cola has done it. As you know, they, their formula is locked up in some vault. So they do have some strength to your trade secrets. Okay. Um, also, number 17, working with companies overseas in China. Avoid it if you can. Stay with, within the United States. It's easier to manage. It's easier to build relationships. It's a, it's easier to way to communicate because most of those guys are going to have manufacturing facilities all over the world. So start in the United States, start there, build relationships, and if they work overseas, who cares? But don't just go straight overseas. Uh, you can. People do it all the time, but it's hard to manage it from here. Okay, number 18. Companies that do not respect intellectual property, avoid them. Companies that are kind of the wild, wild west. I mentioned a little earlier, they're kind of, you know, I'm not going to name the category. Just do your homework on the internet. But find those industries that do value intellectual property. Realize this, you guys, you never own anything. It's always perceived ownership. Every one of these 18 tips is really a brick in the wall. You don't have to have all 18. Maybe one or two might work. But these are some things to be aware of. Don't be fearful. Be concerned. Educate yourself. And thank you for watching. This is Stephen Key.